Okay, it is now 7.03 a.m. on Thursday, July 20th, sorry, 2023, 2024 annual school board meeting, and I'm going to call this meeting to order. So maybe we'll rise and see the pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Next on our agenda is confirmation and approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented? I'll move to approve the agenda. Wait a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so welcoming of visitors, we've got our principals and Mr. Engel um, online. Like Mrs. Kelly's getting connected, and is that for Jenny Bramble? Otherwise, that's everybody that's on here today. So, welcome, teachers. So, item number two on our agenda is organization of the board for the 23 24 school year. And um, we have two elected board members who must take an oath. Uh, incumbent school board members may wish to review the oath. So, um, Sonia and Rhonda. This oath is referenced in North Dakota Century Code 440105 and is written within the North Dakota Constitution, Article 11, Paragraph 4. So um, Shannon, uh, business manager Shannon Jepson will do the oath of office with the new. Okay, all of them do it. Okay. Thank you very much. I I do solemnly swear. I, I do, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support, support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of North Dakota. And the Constitution of the State of North Dakota. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of member of the School Board of Oaks. Of the Office of Member of the School Board of Oaks. Oaks Public Schools oh. District 41. Public <laughs> Schools <laughs> District 41. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. According to, to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Welcome, Board Member Sire, and welcome back, Board Member Nagel. And I guess I should just say that um, Board Member Heimbach is going to try and um, pop on, but family emergency. So we think her the very best and her family the very best. Excuse me, Mr. Tme. So um, under item 2B is election of officers. So um, I would like to call for the nomination for the president of the school board for the 23-24 year. <clears throat> Sonia, ready to go another year? That's all though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll validate Sonia. Second. I'll second. Okay. Do we need a discussion? If you want. Okay. Is there any discussion? <laughs> <Sherry. laughs> okay, well then let's just I better do a roll call, huh? Or does it have to be a roll call? Uh, okay. I wanna I wanna know who votes <laughs> 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 Ron Today, yes. Monica Heimbach, oh, absent. Sheila Nagel, yes. Brian Sayer, yes. Sonia Meal, yes. Okay, now that I hand it over to the president of the school board, okay. who will now preside over the meeting. Thank you, Anna, and thank you for supporting me for president. I am willing to do this for one more year, but remember, this is it. I will not. No, not it. <laughs> Which will be 12 years then. No. Um, so I will now entertain a uh, nomination for the office of vice president. The current vice president is Monica Heimbach. And she never has to share who. No. Is anybody under your name? Um, one year, Carla Holscher was the vice president, and I was down at a junior high football game. And I was about two minutes late. I think she called me. <laughs> My 
nominations for vice presidents. Oh, I know she's not here, but I'm going to nominate Monica Hunt. Monica Heinbuck has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, uh, we will vote on uh, uh, for by, uh, Monica Heinbuck as vice president. Let's call the roll. Ron DeDay. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Heinbuck absent. Brian Sire. Yes. Sonny Miel. Yes. The motion passes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it, it's like reading scripture in church. If you don't know how to pronounce it, just be confident because nobody else knows. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm like, oh, that's crazy. All right. So, my understanding is that you're wanting us to act on each of these items one through 13. Yes, I'm sorry. Separately, or yeah. are there, is there a group of them that we are going to do together, or are they all in for I think we better do them all individual okay. just because, for the record, and we have to turn it into the stage. Okay. Very good. Then, so our next item on the agenda is board appointments, designations, and authorizations, of which there are 13. <laughs> Some of them may involve a little bit of discussion. Um, and in your board guidance that Anna has provided to us, she has made her recommendations. So I'll try to say what those are. And I'll be seeking a motion and a second for each of them. We'll have an opportunity for discussion, and then we will have a quick roll call. So the first one is the federal program representative. Mrs. Sell recommends appointing her, the superintendent, as our federal program representative. Is there a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Day moves. Is there a second? Yes. Sire so seconds. Any discussion? Can you just briefly tell us what the federal programs represent? Yes, so that would be um, the person that is in charge or is the contact person or whatever. Shannon and I work together on a lot of federal programs, but it's like Title I, Title II, Title IV, Title V, those monies. Um, it probably would be at the Office of Civil Rights. You know, it's just any of those federal programs, but we oversee that, the, the writing grants, the, the things like that. So. Okay, very good. Is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. I have a roll call then. All right. Rhonda Day. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Uh, Heinbuck absent. Sonny Meal. Yes. Uh, motion passes four to zero. Next is 504, section 504 coordinator. Why don't you give us okay. an overview? Okay, so we do have children that um, uh, have what is called 504. It's a protective piece that is written, a plan, um, it, it has to deal with kids that have a disability of some kind, maybe short term, long term, but it actually, 504s cover a child from, or a person from birth to death. So let's say you're deaf and you are working out in a workplace, um, they possibly could have to um, do some kind of accommodation for you, but this is just a protection for kids like that. So Jamie will oversee the 504s in the elementary and the high school, even though Ed will be probably the administrator of the 504s in the high school, but Jamie will oversee it. She's been doing it the last few years, so she's got quite a bit of knowledge in that area. Okay, so mm -hmm. Mr. Sell recommends our elementary counselor, Jamie Franks, be designated as our section 504 coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeking a motion for that. Okay, well, Nagel moves that. Is there a second? Second. Gay seconds. Is there any discussion? Um, and that that is different than from an IEP. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's the next one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Monica Heinbuck's absent. Uh, Sheila Nagel. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Sonia Miel. Yes. Motion <laughs> passes four to zero. Next is ADA coordinator. So that's the IEPs, and we just kind of split it up between the two counselors. Hopefully, we never need to. Um, access that, but um, he is our ADA coordinator. We love him. And this would be his first year in that role. I do. I don't know if he did it last year or not. We may have probably designated him. I is what I'm thinking. Yeah, we did. Now that I think about it, yeah. Okay. So with that, um, uh, Superintendent Sell recommends Edward Wentworth to be our ADA coordinator. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Day moves. Is there a second? Sire seconds. Any discussion? 
Any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Pinebuck absent. Rhonda Day. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. Sonia Neal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Uh, next is our Title IX coordinator. So I know probably most of you have heard about Title IX equality in sports, but it's a lot more than that now. It has to do with sexual harassment and all of that. It encompasses it's a big umbrella. Hopefully we never have to go down here. We have training during the year that our teachers all have to have. So Chad and I work together to oversee those pieces, to make sure we're meeting those. <clears throat> is there a motion to accept <laughs> Superintendent Sell's recommendation to appoint her, our superintendent, as our Title IX coordinator? So moved. Nagel moves. Is there a second? Yes. Sawyer so seconds. <clears throat> Any discussion? I would just note at the last, uh, I was at the last uh, school board association convention and there was a title nine um, present kind of a keynote, not a keynote, but a, a, a session for the entire convention. And I wasn't really paying that much attention to my schedule. And when the gal got up and said, well, I'm gonna talk for the next 90 minutes on title nine, I, I laughed. I thought she was joking. She talked for 90 minutes. And it was amazing, all of the things she talked about. These two were there, and there was a lot, a lot of stuff and a lot of new new things that uh, lots of things were changing, and it's a big, big task, much more than counting the number of courts we have for each gender. So with that, is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Brian Sayer. Yes. Monica Heimbach is absent. Rhonda Day. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. And next, uh, Mrs. Sell uh, recommends appointing her, our superintendent, as our civil rights compliance officer. Do you know what you do for that? <laughs> yeah, that's one that you, you want to avoid also for that, because if you're not following the rules of the ones up above, they're probably going to come knocking on your door. <laughs> so we, we want to avoid that one. But <laughs> We're giving Anna all of these fun jobs. Do you ever thought being a superintendent was easy? Well. No, you know. <laughs> okay, so with that, uh, I am seeking a motion to accept Mrs. Sell's recommendation as herself, our superintendent, as our civil rights compliance officer. Is there a motion? Day moves. Is there a second? Nagel seconds. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Any discussion? None. None. Please call the roll. Uh, Day. Yes. Nagel. <laughs> yes. Sire. Yes. Heimbuck's absence. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Uh, one more for Mrs. Stell. She recommends that we appoint her as the representative, as our representative to the Cheyenne Valley Special Ed Unit Board. So the board is made up of all the superintendents of the schools that belong. It, it is all superintendents because once many years ago, several years ago, um, someone who was in education at that time suggested to me that there should be some parents, teachers in that book. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a superintendent. So every meeting they have their teachers rep that comes to the meeting, so they're very involved. Um, there's Valley City, Barnes County, us. Maple Valley and Whole Page, so five schools. Oh, yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. Okay, so with that, is there a motion to appoint Anna Sell as our Cheyenne Valley Special Ed Unit Board Representative? Go ahead, Brian. Be bold. Great, I'll make the motion. Okay, so your moves to appoint <laughs> Anna Sell for is there a second? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, day seconds. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Time books absent. Brian Sire. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Bonnie Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. SRCTC board member, um, like the Cheyenne Valley Special Ed, we are members of the Southeast Region Career Tech Center. Um, we appoint one member to that board. There are, I don't know, 11, 12 schools on that board. Going. I can't yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, 
Um, and I was on that board, I think, for four years. It's a good board. It's an interesting board. Sheila has been on it for probably I think four. four. Yeah. So um, I would entertain uh, nominations for that board. Sheila, are you? I'm fine. You're keeping it from somebody else, though. Is there a nomination for SRCTC board? Um, or how about a, yeah, a motion a to motion. appoint? Yes, that's what I'm looking for. A motion to appoint Dave moves and cite a second. Is there any discussion? I would note that it's so spread out that they do offer the, uh, typically do they still just have, they have, you can meet in person at Wapaton, in person in Oaks, and then they join together. And some join and if you can't make it either one, either October, right? So yeah, through your own their own school. It's not yes. Zoom. It's through. Get, the only time we use Zoom is if we're all on. Okay. Um, all right. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Please call the roll. Brian Sire. Yes. Uh, Heimbuck's absent, Sheila Nagel. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. <laughs> Next is to appoint one board member to Vicki County JBA board. I've been on that board for five years or so. Um, we did just meet this week. Um, the kind of the the gist is that the the county JBA board gets um, a mill levy and we get funding from taxpayers and a budget from the county commission to support economic development in our county. And so we give, we, we approve loans and grants to businesses and individuals to try to spur development and keep our, um, keep our communities healthy so that we can attract, well, it, it's a job development authority. And I keep telling them we have jobs. But jobs aren't jobs until we have people that are in them. It's people that we're seeking, not just to fill the jobs, but to live in our communities and bring their kids to our schools, to keep our tax base up in order to help us continue to fund the education that we have. So I am willing to continue on that board. Where do you guys usually meet? We, we rotate. It used to almost always be the ranch house. Well, um, I suggest... Yeah. Well, yeah, we, I think we're going there next time, but we've met the last two times in Ellendale. Um, we met on Monday evening at the new American Legion, which isn't quite finished yet, but uh, we had made a very nice grant and loan to them in May to support that project. And we met there, which I like meeting in places where we have we invested yeah. our money. We met, um, um, met at Growing Small Towns, uh, we met, we met at the bowling alley in uh, Ellendale and various places. So I'll entertain a motion for uh, an appointment to the Big County JBA. Fine. Um, for make a motion. That's fine. That's fine. Um, Nagel moves to appoint Sonia Meal to the Big County JBA board. Is there a second? Uh, Sire seconds. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Uh, Rhonda Day. Yes. Heimbuck's absent. Brian Sire. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Sonny Neal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion passes four to zero. All right. So now we, in our packet, there was our next item is board committee assignments. Oh, I didn't get my packet. Um, no, I have the packet. I just have to open the right file. Um, I'm sure I got it. It's on page. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. So the following are the recommendations of board members to be seated on these committees. Technology committee currently is Sheila Nagel. Um, no change in that recommendation. Negotiations committee um, is a standing, these are standing committees. 
Currently that is Sheila and myself. And I'm gonna recommend that we leave that for now, but um, this committee typically is active once a year in non-negotiating years, and that is in the spring to um, review administrative and classified compensation and make recommendations to the board. Um, because I'll be going off the board, I feel like I would like to appoint someone else. Um, and I was thinking of Monica because she's got payroll and human resources and benefits knowledge, but I'm not going to, I think I can do that at any time, but I want to give it to her. But if anyone else is really interested in it, I would. They're usually lining up, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I would also note that we've discussed changing our uh, negotiations protocol or the way we do it to uh, explore in what's called collaborative negotiations that might make it might make it in the long run easier and more effective but it a change is always a challenge so it might like everything it might be messy as we move into it but I kind of added that to the agenda for tonight and then I reached out to the teachers to say is this the direction we want to go if so we'll put it on the agenda all right um <clears throat> the wellness committee were required by Policy. Are we required by law to have that committee? I think we are. Uh, I think yeah, probably. Are. I, I, it's great. Not yeah. Um, and our board rep on the wellness committee has been Rhonda, and that's what I'm recommending to continue. Facilities has been uh, Robert Thorpe and Monica. Um, Brian, I think, is well equipped to serve on that committee, so I'm recommending him to be appointed there. Leadership and professional learning. Almost a professional development. Yeah. Um, I'm serving on that board. Um, anybody else would like to take my place? That's fine too. Um, not a real conversation. No. Curriculum, which is, I think, a very important committee. Uh, Monica and Brian, uh, Brian would be replacing Rhonda on that, or not Rhonda, Robert um, on that committee. And the other two that are listed in our packet are sick leave, which are only active when needed. So those are my recommendations as outlined in your packet. And as I said, I'd like to um, consider making a change to the negotiation committee, but we'll do that later. Is there a motion related to the board committee assignments? Nagel moves to accept the recommendations of board committee assignments. Is there a second? Sire seconds. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Monica Heimbach absent. Rhonda Day. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Next, uh, we need to authorize Oaks Public School to join the North Dakota High School Activities Association. Is there such a motion? Nagel moves to authorize Oaks Public Schools to join North Dakota High School Activities Association. Is there a second? Second. Um, a second. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, oh, no, ready. call the roll, please. Brian Sire? Yes. Rhonda Day? Yes. Monica Heimbuck's absent. Uh, Sheila Nagel? Yes. <laughs> Sonny Meal? Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Next item is to designate our official newspaper. Is there a motion related to that? I'm guessing it's supposed to. Well, I think so. So, um, Nagel moves to designate the Oaks Times as our official newspaper. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second. And so, every other year, I think we have to vote on the public ballots. Uh, 
during the school board election whether or not to publish our minutes in our official newspaper. I don't know what else the the official what else what else does the meeting meeting minutes for the special meetings and the regular meeting meeting minutes. We we also use them to publish for bids and obviously for, for advertising, but um, and I, I believe are we required to designate an official newspaper? I, I think we are and um Tyler Hansen is I kind of was just taking his lead on it. He said I think better to be safe than sorry mm -hmm. that we didn't do it and you know we've always done yeah we always have I think <laughs> You know, and sometimes things change. You know, we, we can, it may be that we were required by law and now, oh, we're not anymore on right. some things. And, and, or we may be required to do some things that we weren't before. Right, so that very well could be. Just not, just don't just go by last year. Like that 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 that. <laughs> All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Brian Sire. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Monica's absent. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Um, next item on the agenda is to designate Starian Bank uh, or designate financial institutions for depository funds. And we have now and have, as long as I've been on the board, have designated Starian Bank, Bank North, and First Community Credit Union. Is there a motion related to our designated financial institutions for depository funds? I'll make a motion. Um, a day moves to designate Starian, Bank North, and First Community Credit Union as depositories for our funds. Is there a second? Second. Sire seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Hang on, please call the roll. Brian Sire. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Monica Hunbuck's absent. Ron Day. Yes. <clears throat> Sonny Neal. Yes. <clears throat> motion passes four to zero. Next is to set the regular board meeting dates, time, and place. We have, um, in recent years, been meeting 7 a.m. on the second Tuesday. It has seemed to work well for. Our board members, when I first got on the board, we were meeting in the evening, or we meet sometimes at noon, or we meet at five o'clock. And, um, you know, most board members have kids, and kids are in activities, and who wants to miss their kids' activities for a school board meeting? So that's when we went to 7 a.m., and it's worked well. Um, I'm flexible with days and times of the week. Do you have to do Tuesdays? No, we do not. Tuesday doesn't work. Well, it's not the not best for me. Any but other day? Any other day? It's like Monday off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I can make that. Tuesdays work, but it's easier. That's a good day. Yeah. Friday? Yeah. That's up to you guys. Um, I, I just in the package just said I your I know your request was Thursday or I know Friday. Um I don't think it really it doesn't matter to me. Fridays are <clears throat> I too, we have Fridays that we have off of school, but I guess we can make some adjustments on that. Right. We, it, it's a regular designated day, but it, we, we always look ahead and say, yeah. oh, well, that's not going to work for yeah. somebody. But it's hard to stick with it. There are only five of us. So it's it, like you're, you're the lesser CTC board. There are, you know, it's just four of us. So um, are we going to try for later in the month? Well, yes. that, that was what we discussed during our school board training that instead of trying, you know, it, when we get to the consent agenda, I think the idea was everything on the consent agenda should be sent out by two weeks before the meeting. So the bills and the financial reports and um, all the, you know, the, the administrative reports. So we have time to review and it. we should review um, and then send in questions. And if there's something we want to pull off of that consent agenda, then We've got plenty of time for the meeting. So, uh, should we consider the third, either Thursday or Friday? Some of those months are going to be hit and miss. Like, I'm looking at September 15th is the third Friday. Well, I'm, I'm going to need more than one day to do all that if you're going to get it two weeks in advance. So, there's, I mean, it's going to be <clears throat> October. That's the third. That's the 
the 20th, so I could, yeah. yeah I mean, November, if it's the Thursday or Friday, we may sometimes run Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But that, not this year, the no, Thursday, yeah. Friday is the 16th, 17th. <laughs> So do you want to go the third Friday at 7 a.m.? Sounds better in your schedule. I can make whatever work. Tuesday doesn't work for you. Don't be too nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I'm made, just, I know you I've made it work this whole time. time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, feeling like we have a consensus around the third Friday. Um, so is there a motion to set the third Friday at 7 a.m. as our regular meeting? And that will have to have an, an exception already in August because we have to meet before August 10th to, to approve our, our budget. But it could be a special meeting. And if this is a working meeting, change sure. mm -hmm. yeah, right. At the central well, Could we start it in September then? The third Friday? How about let's set it and then we'll 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 make the exception as needed for August when we okay. get to the our setting okay. next week meeting. Yep. And we may we may find we need to have two meetings in August mm -hmm. with all the things that's going on. So is there a motion um, to set our um, regular meeting date and day and time as the third Friday of each month at 7 a.m. in the central conference? In the central conference. I'll, I'll make a motion to have our monthly meeting the third Friday at 7 a.m. in the conference. By your moves, is there a second? Second. Uh, a second. Hope that's okay with Monica. Any discussion? <laughs> is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Time books absent. Brian Sire. Yes. Tony Meal. Yes. The motion passes four to zero. As we went through these, I thought of um, in the past, we have at some point approved, I don't think it was joining the school boards association, but um, contracting with them for the policy. And it may be that we haven't gotten a bill or we, you know, we can do that in the future. I think having policy services is extremely valuable. Actually, Shannon does have a bill and we, I dug into it and I didn't see anywhere where the, you guys have to approve it, but you do have to sign this contract okay. with them. So she just has the papers for you to sign. Okay. Um, all right. But I, I didn't see anything on there where, and we didn't approve it last year. So I mean, we just, yeah. I, I think we have in the past, but I couldn't tell you how many times we have used them and how many times you get the bill, you're like, Ooh. but they take care of, they maintain our website, they do all of the posting, they keep us updated, but I think there'll be more updates this year just because of the legislative session changes that are coming through already that we're dealing with. So. Okay, so um, what is the bill? Um, it is $250 for the 23-24 policy services basic subscription, and it's $700 for the policy service maintenance of the web hosting. So I'm assuming that's where they keep our stuff posted and online. So the total bill is $950. Oh, there's it. Oh, And then they are also our resource. I mean, she can't give us legal advice on specifics, but I can call her and ask her questions based in policy and they'll help us out so but in addition to that we pay dues to the association mm -hmm. correct something else but this is policy services and you've seen policy you've i'm sure looked at our policy and it's it's complex and it's legal and some districts let their policy lapse and then they go through it every fifth year and it's a horrible horrible job to get back up to speed and some districts never do they just they just don't and it's it's bad practice. So we're gonna. I would like to return it, but it. Uh, I I don't think it's necessary for the board to approve. If anybody has any objections, speak up. All right, we'll move then to the board consent agenda. Mm -hmm. um, according to our guidance here, with uh, from Anna, there are. Um, all right, anything in red? Um, do you even have a 
copy of the no. Journal? Oh, one minute. Let me make one of the you can hand it back. I'll be right back. Okay, so anything that's in red on the agenda, there is a uh, corresponding documents in the packet to for supporting documentation. Anything that's in blue, uh, typically there's going to be something coming out before the meeting. It's just not ready yet. Um, if it's in black, it's just for discussion. Or, uh, Anna, I really like this guidance document that Anna and I have with us, that step by step. So, here, um, the consent agenda are items that we're just going to act on with little or no discussion. And you receive them in advance, and it's um, um, non controversial. You have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and we would act on them in one single motion. However, items A and B are minutes, and those are for approval. The rest of them, uh, superintendent's report, bills, is Yeah, your guidance says item C. I'm sorry, did I do it wrong? I think it said, should say C, C through D. And C oh, I'm sorry, C through D. Are um, items that we accept. Okay. The difference being approving is we're approving. This is actually what happened, and we're accepting reports that are, that, yes, we got them. That doesn't mean we approve every little thing that she's done, but she's within her authority to do it. Um, Curious though about the bills. Are we to approve bills or just accept? Um, I think we're supposed to approve them. So oh, I think good. That, okay. Yeah. So we're okay. we're wanting to approve items A and B and D. Okay. D. E. Sorry, my bad. I got those switched around. It okay. Me. Yeah. And just the reports, the superintendents and the business managers' report, are for acceptance. Okay. I'll make sure that we. That's okay. Um, I had just, I would just say that on, on these items, on the, the special board meeting minutes, when, uh, and, and uh, Shannon did send out a revised copy. One thing I noticed was that um, one of the gentlemen with ICS, his name was misspelled, and I, I specifically noticed it because I had looked at his name tag or it was up on the screen. I'm like, whoa, how do you say that? And she had spelled it phonetically rather than how it really was. I'm a shoe like so we see in my head. <laughs> you look for those things. Like that those kind of things so stand out to me. And um and then I questioned Shannon um because she had listed out every single line item and the dollar amount, knowing that these are you know it's going to be published in the paper. I want to be transparent, but also knowing that the ICS represented that, you know, you just can't add all these up because there's a lot of redundancy in there. Do, should we or should we consider not printing every single line item? Um, Shannon added the words estimated or something, uh, approximate or something in a second version of these minutes that she sent out. I highlighted and bolded, they have outlined possible facilities projects by location. And so once we approve these minutes, this is how the minutes will be. I'll sign them. They'll be going into the Oaks Times for publication, and this is what's going to show up. And I'm fine with it. I just, that was just a question that I brought to Shannon's attention. Oh, I don't know, but it's fine. That's the way we want to approve them. Then. Um, that's the way that we've been published, and it's it's very transparent. It's also very scary. Yes. So, with that, um, I seek a motion um, to approve items A, B, D, E, and F, and to accept items C and G. The business manager's report, and we could, you know, we won't have a lot of discussion, but um, we can have some discussion if anybody has questions on those sides. Uh, 
Councilman Nagel makes the motion on the consent agenda. Is there a second? Fire yes. second. All right. Were there any um, items that anybody had questions on or that either Sharon or Anna would like to highlight from their reports? Just um, hopefully you were able to read the reports because later on this is going to come up with the fees because um, Mr. Engel made some suggestions or from our technology meeting about um, changes in insurance. And then Jara made, well, Jara didn't have one, that was a couple months ago, but um, uh, Robin made suggestions for changes in our fees for athletics and things like that. So that'll come up later, just in case if you need to refer back to this. But one thing I do want to point out, okay, I don't have it in my report, but those two guys sitting over there, the high school and elementary principal, you know, the two guys that work here with us, is that, they are here. They are not on contract right now with us, but I'm telling you, they have been here just about every day. Greg and Dorn were here all day yesterday. They're here today. They're, they're working outside. They're, they're just fantastic. And without them, with their dedication to us, we, we would be in trouble. And we would be starting the year behind the eight ball, but they're on top of things. And you know, we've been having trouble with staffing. Greg's been working on that. They're working outside of hours. They answer emails. They're constantly doing stuff for us. So. They're uh, very much appreciated and very precious as far as how we function here at the school. So thank you, Jordan, and thank you, Greg. Yes, <laughs> 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 oh, <yeah. laughs> I, I brought him back from Stroop Walk. So <laughs> and Mark, so he was happy about that. <laughs> okay, any, any questions or? Mm -hmm. There he is. Thanks, Greg, for always being here. I just have some things I'd like to add because I had this, my business report was done on oh, oh, July 5th, it says here. So I applied for the clean, the clean air grant. Um, I did all the paperwork yesterday. So that should be here before the end of the month. We got the maximum of $22,877. Um, Dallas from Western Agency was here last week. Um, our square footage on all of our properties was accurate. Um, the um, building cost per square foot was low, but it, he said we at this point in time in life, every year we could reevaluate it and it's going to be low. But we are going to reassess that. I did write out the check yesterday and brought it to Western Agency because it's due here in the next couple of days, but there will be an increase simply because of the square footage cost to replace some of the buildings. Um, we went through and you know, some of the, the properties on the on the deck sheet, Anna and I had looked at them, we didn't, you know, just the description of them were like, what, they, a high tunnel at the center. Oh, no. I have no idea what a high tunnel is. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I thought it was the tunnel between two buildings. I'm like, why would that be? So it was a good experience to go through. We, we, we visited the, the press box. We, um, they're getting a quote to add the, uh, football or the sign that Ergotron or the sign out of the football field that's not insured by anybody. Um, he's going to read or find out how much two marquee signs at the local center here are, you know, what's the cost, and, and we'll go through with that. You know, there's the Starian sign out there as well, the Starian track and field sign that I assume now belongs to us. It's not digital, but it's a is that the one on the it would be the east side on the well, there's that the that one and the one on the highway. Oh, okay. I think he did. We did notice the one there. There's two signs. I'll make sure I email and make sure there's two signs there. Um, we also noted when we went through the the vehicles. I had to add the new bus that we just received. Um, our football trailer, the Bravo trailer, um, and finisher. So I put that on there. Um, so I'm just kind of holding off and waiting to see. That this. made me think, is there is there a provision that says, and we cover anything that you forgot to put on? Like, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> they say, well, anything you buy or rent, and, you know, I, you, you faithfully try to report things when right. you get them, but right. if something yeah. is missed, are we okay? Because that might not be the only thing. Right, yep. Well, we have the $3 million liability. Did he, he put that on there? I don't know if like an error of admission is on there. Um, the other thing, when we were out of the track, um, 
it was kind of a ticket shock to me because I told them I said we just built a new track a couple thousand a couple years ago and it was three you know in just a little over three hundred thousand dollars. So he's he you know I I don't know where the threshold is on on insuring it or not. He's making a quote on it. You know the worst case would be a uh, tornado would come by and pretty much you know uplift the track or trees or cars or buildings go across it and it's damaged. Um, he's working on a quote to, to see. He, I, he had to give me a, a, a message or anything. So that's one thing that will be coming to see if, if that's something we want to entertain or not, and how much it's going to cost. So I have a question. Yeah. Here. Does the trailer have to be insured? Because I always thought that if it's being pulled, the full vehicle insures it. For the liability, I believe, but if the trailer yes. is sitting somewhere and oh. the tree falls on it, okay. Yeah, yeah, because I asked them the same thing because we it was out at the shop or when we were at the bus garage, which was a good because I had never walked into the bus garage either. So we went in there and he wanted to know what kind of floor it was and ceilings and and so I asked him. I said, I'm assuming since it has to be titled and and I have to buy the tabs every year, it he goes, oh yes, this needs to be. So we did. It is on there now. It should be very, very inexpensive. In my, it was twenty five dollars. Yeah. So, but it, but it's insured. Yeah. But if, if if the bus is pulling it and the bus and the trailer have an accident and it's not insured, then it's it's not insured for that. If if it causes a liability, the power unit, I believe, is what carries the liability. It can't really do anything, but. So um, I I think I had included in my business manager report uh, the our association dues to this North Coast School Board Association. Um, well, and that's I don't recall how much that was. I think it's just over seven thousand fifteen hills. I think it's just over seven thousand dollars for the um, school year's dues to belong to the school board association. And the new bus was nine hundred, I believe, thirty-seven dollars to insure the school bus. I got that insured here. I paid that yesterday, also. All right. The old one was taken. Um, it has not yet been. I just got yesterday. I Dave sent me the pictures because he had to dismantle it. He had to drill a hole in the engine block and cut a bunch of things. So I said, well, until that actually is done, I just have to insure it too. Right. So. And that bus is a 1990 something bus that's being disabled. Yes. So now I our entire it. fleet will be in this millennium. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag goals. Yep. <laughs> Good or bad. Number nine. It's still going down the road. <laughs> yes. So, and then the other thing that Dickie County, um, Don Flaherty did send us, or did send Anna and I, um, the new taxable value um, for the land that is within Dickey County's or Oakville School District. And then I reached out to Lamore and um, theirs hasn't been finalized, but it did go up also. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's an estimate, but it's gone up. So at least those two went up. I have at least some numbers to kind of play with for that. Thank you. If there are no other questions or highlights, I will. Um, Call, um, well, I'll just uh, take a voice vote on the consent agenda. There's a motion and a second to approve and uh, accept the items on the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say no. Motion passes. Now we get some really fun stuff. Um, regular meeting, committee meeting, and reports of facilities. A killer update with action. <laughs> okay, so I, I know Brian has some more information and Monica's not here, but um, I, I, I the, the, in the board packet, my recommendations, I, I they could have changed. That was before I had left, but here's what I saw as our options is we can fix the chiller and the approximate cost of $111,000. Buy a new chiller. The last cost estimate for the unit without it was available was $460,000. Find a temporary solution by renting a unit or buying a used unit. And I know that Dave, Brian, Lori, and Bob are in discussions about that. So I'll let um, uh, Brian talk to you about that. Or 
option four is wait to address the chiller um, in a larger future facilities project. But you're going to need to make a. I think we need to make a decision on this moving forward because we're already in July, right? And moving forward, if we decide you want to go to a bigger project, I have talked to Lori and they'll be here tonight to discuss more of that. Maybe you want to put that conversation off till later. I don't know. As far as if we would do some kind of a project, we would have to start the motions and moving, you know, and they think um, that they could do, okay, this is just a guess. Summer 2025 is when they can start working on. So <clears throat> that between now and then, if you do a bigger project, um, but maybe I'll just let Brian, yeah. he was kind yeah. enough to start on the facilities committee already. Okay, so what do you have? What are your thoughts on your report? Okay, so I call the place for renting money. You can rent a shoulder for $9,000 a month. Plus then you get a paid to have it shipped in and then have somebody come and set it all up. Um, call the place in Texas. And they buy used chillers and they bring them into their facility and they go through them 100%. They hook them up, they run a video of it operating and then they send all the information. I have talked to the guy three times on the cell phone and I have emailed him twice. He just solo on equipment, but he's never emailed me back. So a chiller to sit out here would be approximately $80,000. And at $80,000, then it would probably chew up that $111,000 by the time it was brought, shipped here, hooked up and running. But with that being said, you could probably get by five to 10 years for sure. So if we were to buy a used one that's operational, no warranty, probably be 100 to $110,000, get us by for five to 10 years until we decided, you know, if we we're going to put together a big future plan. And then at the end of that, we would still have piece of equipment that we could resell. And the gentleman that I was talking to said that when they buy them back, they buy them back at about 30 cents on the down. So we would still have a little bit left for to, you know, to resell them back. Back up when you said renting a chiller for $9,000 a month plus transport and setup. Yeah. Is that what you said you thought would come out to 80 grand? No, the 80 oh. grand would be to buy a Okay. Uh, or basically a rebuilt chiller. And then if we were to rent at $9,000 a month plus transportation and setup, right. would we keep it for spring and pay it all winter long? Or? I don't, yeah, I don't know. That was through United Rentals. And that guy got back to me as quick as everybody else does. Mm -hmm. Not very fast. Because they don't have anything right now to rent here. I'm assuming if it sat here, we would probably still be paying nine thousand dollars because it would have to come out of Minneapolis to get to any of that. So well, I'm it, guessing they ship them all over the U.S. And it, if we want it again in the spring, it does still make sense to okay. We only need it for September, August, September, October, and then rid of it, and then pay the shipping and right, right, set up and all that stuff. I guess my suggestion. I would like to have chiller systems out of Fargo come down and look at the chiller we have now and get a second opinion on that instead of this company out of Minneapolis. And then see see what their suggestion would be or what their price would be to maybe get this one back up and running for a couple of years until we were able to move forward with a larger project. I would say the summer of 2025 would definitely be the right time frame before we start anything. It would just be a matter of getting to that point with something. So if we rebuild the existing, is there some sort of warranty that comes with no, no, no. So it, can you build that and make the dye into it? Yeah. So if you fix the old one, there's no warranty. If you buy a rebuilt one, there's no warranty. If you rent one, there's no warranty. And to move forward to buy a new one. I don't I don't know that that would be a good idea right now because 
you would want to have an engineering firm come in to size it according to what we would do down the road. And that would be part of the larger budget. So my suggestion, first suggestion would be is to have this company out of Fargo. Um, I talked to a few people that know these guys at Shiller Systems in Fargo. And even if it costs us thousand dollars to come down and give us a quote and we're going to take to get this old one up and running just to get us by for a couple of years. So the current quote from the folks out of Minneapolis is 111,000? Yeah, and I think that is just I think that's terrible. I think that's a terrible amount of money. And I think they were you know, the dollars. That's my suggestion or my thoughts. Do you have any indication of how quickly Chiller Systems of Fargo can no. get here? No, I, I, I didn't even, I, I have not talked to you because I didn't want to talk to anybody else until today. Well, you mentioned possibly revisiting that for this topic this evening. Mm -hmm. And I'm not opposed to that, but it's a special meeting and it's a retreat. And historically, we do not take action mm -hmm. of a couple. But um, <laughs> but that's I, I I don't want to take action. I mean, if we could throughout today even get in touch with this company and find out, oh yeah, we can have somebody down there Monday to look exactly. at. Or oh gosh, no, we wouldn't be able to be there till the fifteenth of October. Right. That might make a difference in our absolutely thoughts. Yeah. Right. What did you say? Eighty thousand. That was just that was just for the unit. So oh, right, they have other stuff yeah. too. I guess plus that one hundred eleven thousand dollars is probably chewed up like right now. I rebuilt one, and that's just the rebuilt chiller that doesn't assess that doesn't hit our electronics that runs that chiller, correct? Uh, well, you, you gotta explain a little bit. Control board is it? I don't know. So, so this would be just just setting setting a whole new chill or, or a rebuilt chill or just setting it on the ground outside of the mechanical room and then having a pipe fitter come in and run the plumbing to it, have an electrician wire it, and then just letting it run. Okay. Because wasn't it my understanding when Bob was here last time that the electronic system had failed last fall and by the Act of God, there was some old mechanical <laughs> that little like computer circuit board. board. Yeah. Oh, in the mechanical room. Yeah. Yeah, and and that was just found and put in there, yeah. so we could still uh, it, the chiller could be replaced and the electronics could still go out the next day. Right. That's okay. true. Yep. Okay. But yeah. the electronics that are in the mechanical room, them are ones that are just running through the classrooms, right, and then talking to the Chiller. Just in that, and the, and the boiler too. You know when they yeah. switch over yeah. to the boiler, yeah. just, just for that building. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't I don't think that there would be anything wrong with calling them, right? Because where 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 else are we going to go, right? So let's say exactly. they say, okay, we'll come down and they have the same cost. I think we're in the same place that we're not going to be able to fix it. Right. And, and right. so we just move forward and then. Um, but make then we get a second opinion. Yeah. Somebody that's right. A lot local work. Yeah. Okay, so I I think we should follow that and get in touch with them. What let's let's say what what are our thoughts if in fact they say oh it's going to be even more than one hundred and eleven thousand. What what would we do then? What, I think then we need to. I think well I think our only next option is to try to find a used chiller. You said yeah for. Your your limited information is they're not very available. No, it wouldn't be this fall. And a new chiller for four hundred and sixty thousand. That that's a ridiculous number, also. Maybe maybe Fargo Chillers has a Correct. number on that as well. Maybe yeah, maybe, maybe they have. Maybe they could be the answer to a lot of this, also. Because a new chiller then would come with a warranty yes. and could get us by for a period. Of, as you said, five years right. or less, and then we would have an item that would have resale value. Yes. So when I was talking to this guy out of Texas, he said that when he rebuilt them 
and he ships them out at between 70 to 80 thousand dollars he's at 50 cents on the dollar so telling me that a new chiller is less than two hundred thousand dollars for what we need i think so the 400 and sorry the no, 400 no. some thousand yeah. dollars that they quoted is that's just a bad number. But is that all in with, you know, yeah. removal and disposal of the no, old one? And that that was just, just the unit. Sitting wherever it is. Bob commented to me was in we're taking a DeLorean and putting it in the back of our Chevy is needed. Yeah, we don't need nothing like that. But that's the only thing they had available. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
he has done some stuff with this in the past as far as contracted work, which I think you had uh, mm -hmm. asked for that information. But I think for right now, we should just, if you look at policy BAA, it takes two thirds of the board, board excluding the um, employed board member, who is, I think, gets in trouble. No, it depends on who's here for the quorum, right? Without Monica here, we would be. Well, we'll have okay. three that's still a quorum. Okay. Aye. Okay. Uh, so I think what I'm suggesting is that you just approve his continued employment as a bus driver. And let's say later on in the future, if we need Brian to do some work for us and some contracted, we can meet later on and prove that on a case-by-case -case basis. Is that? Yes, I did ask Sam to share with me what has been paid to him in the past three or four years. And he's been paid to, um, do the chain gang and football probably oh. personally and so i'm i'm okay with that too. um just for historical um as far as the bus driving and activities i personally have no problem with that i would certainly want him to continue to, be, to do that and as bill roney did the same when he was on the board and we're, we're not, we, we need it we need it and it's not a conflict we, we just so seldom even vote on anything related to bus driver compensation, it's, it's once a year. And at that time, I, I think board member Sire could remain either abstain or remain uh, keep his board member hat on. I think he was gonna do that as well. Uh, and then with regard to his business Sire appliance um, from back from 2018 to 2021, um, Shannon was able to find uh, multiple projects totaling $39,000. Um, sewer repairs and drain at the track and their bathroom repairs in the uh, elementary, but nothing since 2021. So um, I agree. Let's just uh, let's take action on the bus driving position and whatever comes up in the future. We'll deal with it. Do you want to? Um, should we amend that um, uh, motion to just be bus driver and activity? Um, or I don't know what how what would you um, call that? Um, do you want to add that in there? Do you think or does that? I think that's so nominal. Okay, let's let's just do it as a bus driver. What is mileage for Rumble on the Red? Do you, did you drive kids oh, in your no. personal vehicle? No, it's just been driving the bus up there. It might have been that's what it said in the description, but I it might have been for had you filled up yeah, gas or diesel on the on the bus if you had been a driver, but it, that's what it read. I am just copying and pasting my Yeah, I, so I, sure. I think the chain gang thing is okay. so minute and it's um, it's not something the board approves or disapproves. Okay. So, um, I would entertain then a motion as outlined in Superintendent Sell's guidance with regard to employment of board member Brian Sire, and I would um, ask that Sire abstain from this. Yes. No. Okay. I move to approve continued employment of board member Brian Sire as a bus driver at school. Yes. Uh, Nagel moves. Is there a second? Second. Oh, they second. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Just jump right in there. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Record. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Uh, Brian Sire abstains. Rhonda Day. Yes. Monica Heimbuck's absence. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes three to zero with one absence and Sire abstains. I would note, I think it was in our packet of, up above where it said officers of the board that the, the board president is allowed to make and second motion. Mm -hmm. So I. I haven't been because you guys have been jumping in there. So, all I've right. Made one or two in my life. I I have tried to avoid it. Um, financial business pledge of assets. Did you send us something on that? She, she just sent that yesterday, right? Oh, no, I I don't think. Is it in our packet? I no, thought I sent them the last packet. week. Okay. No, it's not in the packet. I sent it last week in an email. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, anyway, um, I don't remember seeing it, but oh, no, see that it. doesn't mean I didn't get it. Okay. 
Sometimes she shares things with me and more than she thought oh, she boy. should. It was yesterday, it's so than last time. week. Do we have it on paper? Or no? Yeah, I have it. I, 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 I don't want to copy it. I just okay. want to make sure. Brian, what do you think? Huh. Whatever you suggest. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fairly routine motion. We yeah, do this in right. July, yeah. Yeah. December. Yeah. Right? Um, so, um, Oh, the transfer of money was well, transfer of money. This is on it too. So well, I saw sure. transfer of money. Labeled it the. Not on the first page. It came in two. It was two emails from Shannon, almost back to back. What day was that? I'm looking right. for it. Oh, okay. I thought I saw it too, but it I cannot was, find it now. It was Monday. No, Tuesday. Ten nineteen and ten twenty one. Okay. Oh, there they are. Board meeting number three. Because I wanted to. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to resend this then. Oh yeah. There it is. Oh, you got it. Where am I? Where am I going to find it? Because I want to have. That. It was on Monday. I sent it at ten nineteen on Monday, uh, July twenty. The heading is so board agenda E F business one A B. What day did you send it? Monday, Monday, Monday July 17th. Oh, I do have them. Okay. Um, pledge report. Uh, Zarian, FCC, you and Bank North. Um, is there a motion to approve the pledge of assets report as presented? I move that. Is there a second? Second. That's eight seconds. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say no. The motion passes. I hope that was okay. That was that was a voice vote. <laughs> On the transfer of funds, I am going to ask for a yes. Okay, so does everyone have in front of you the transfer of funds list? Okay. Here's what Derek, you're welcome. Um, we'll let Shannon do this. The motion of the transfer of money. It's right. Oh, thank you. For Brian and for the public. Okay, um, yes. Yeah, explain so the the first the first uh, one I'll talk about is um, the hot lunch fund. So our hot lunch fund operated in the negative this year, and the amount of fifty five thousand three hundred twenty six dollars and sixty one cents. Country code tells us we cannot um, start July one, the new fiscal year, in the negative. So we have to transfer money from the general fund to the hot lunch fund. And that, that $55,326 makes it to zero. And that's a loss just for one year? Correct. <clears throat> Actually, it's a little bit higher because we started the year off in the positive about six or $7,000. And so instead uh, of so carrying that carry over to six or seven, I just brought it to zero. If you want to transfer more, I can. So, so when I saw that yesterday, uh, and I, I shared that I went back to my earlier years on the board, and the, the historical was from what did I say? From like twenty thousand to sixty-six thousand. So this is not out of this is not out of the ordinary. But then we went through two years. From, mm -hmm. We. We, people didn't have to pay for lunches and everything was subsidized. So, um, so is this normal from the district to district? Um, I think it, I had talked to our prior business manager, and he had said that yes, some of the schools like Valley City, Jamestown, Wapiton, that. Group or that size, 
mm -hmm. seems to be able to stay in the positive. He said he's under the understanding that the big ones, you know, Fargo, Bismarck, they do not operate in the black either. Um, Anna had provided some information from other school districts that they they are in the black, but they also pay their hot lunch staff through the general fund. So that I don't really think that really means they operate in the black. Um, but a lot of the smaller schools around us, yes, they are they operate in the So how much of that fifty five thousand is salary? Um I'm not sure what year it's been. I mean, yeah. oh, how much was the whole wages? Yeah. Um, it's in one of these. Feel free to show me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need the All right. So, um, the for the year, our salaries are $80,000. $80,500 for the cooks. We had dishwashers for just to take over 20,000. And we had our clerk at just almost 21,000. That's just salary gross wages. We also have then um, the benefits, which would be nine, 20, 32, 35, $37,000 of benefits, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, on the budget or on the expenditure and revenue report, um, we had budgeted $188,000 for food and we came in at 147. And then fresh foods and vegetables, it was kind of off the opposite. We budgeted 17,000 and we had we spent 28,000. We were still under budget by twenty thousand dollars. So this makes me think about you know, this last winter during the legislative session when there was this, all this uproar about what well, state should pay and schools should pay for the top for every, all the kids' top lunch and, and the legislators were criticized for not voting for paying for the hot lunches and you know knowing what I know. Well, people that can pay for their hot lunch are paying for their hot lunch, and those that aren't paying, the schools are already paying for it. No. We're already paying for it. Now, with the legislative changes this year, anybody that applies for free and reduced lunch that falls within 200% of the national poverty is going to be free lunches. So if the same people applied last year that applied uh, last year that will apply this year, anybody that was free and reduced last year will now be free. So then we'll get reimbursed for them, part of it by the state, part of it by the federal. It's getting people to apply. That is right. problematic. Because the districts have that same problem. Absolutely, yes. yes. And, it, and the school totally benefits from it because obviously right. their bills are paid. But honestly, we don't really find that those are the families that don't pay their bills. Those are the people that come in and pay and they'll make payments. Right. It's people that would not qualify that are not paying their bills. Because I think they just think, well, the school, the school will quote us. But, have all this money. You know, and we we never have shaved kids. We've never cut meals, so the kids will always get to eat. You know, you hear that in the, in the news, but that's not true. I mean, not we yet. have always done that in our school. Um, but we do send home letters constantly to try to get parents. We have sent collections, you know, and but once you send that to collections, you have to write that up as bad debt. You, you're only going to get part of it. This year, we also held. Uh, cards didn't didn't get a report card home to people who haven't paid their bill made a difference that did it wasn't 100 percent but it, it, it got some people paid yeah that's a good idea mm -hmm. so the other um transfer um from the activities fund was uh negative two hundred and twenty nine thousand seven hundred fifty seven dollars and thirty five cents um, from that, I did not, the National Honor Society, the Student Council, and the Cross Country, I left as they were positive. Um, and per the policy HEAC, at the end of the year, um, class funds or any other activities 
that are no longer active are to be transferred to student council. So 2020, 21, 22, and 23 had not been transferred over. So I made those transfers into the student council accounts. And I looked at my history, which went from 2011 through 2015. Um, the activities fund transfer was from about 116,000 to 194,000. And I, I discontinued keeping it, but I think we have information in our packet and budget that will show what it was from 2017 to 2022. It's not, you know, we don't make money on our activities. It's not unprecedented that we transfer funds from the general to activities to cover those. Uh, those activities are good for our kids, but, but we, we don't want we don't want it to keep growing by 10 or 20 percent a year but you know, those those activities have benefit to our kids and our community and something and then the last one is <clears throat> we had um last year there was a three percent special reserve levy and at the you can transfer 50% of that general uh, of that fund um, to the general fund if cho if so chose so on advice of a of a business manager it was you know make the transfer um, because then you can see what is looking here on the on the budget and if if you choose not to do it i can we uh, reverse the, their journal entry, but you have to take it from the special fund. So the special reserve, the the balance of the special reserve was, oh, I don't have that in front of me, but 80, the 50% of it is $89,421.79. I have transferred that from the special reserve to the general fund, and then from the general fund to the building fund. And we don't have to, uh, <clears throat> if you make a motion I, at this point, well, if you, yeah, you would have to include all of them if you're going to approve the June 30th financial statements as they are right now. Now I've lost that page again. Um, like the first one. Yeah, but I, I've lost the file. Oh, um, okay. So, I, uh, a little history again. When I got on the board in 2012, our our special reverse reserve fund was about 229,000, and it stayed there until one year ago. We never transferred anything out of it. We never assessed. Uh, we never levied any dollars. It, it increased by very small amount of dollars or something. I don't know, some interest went into that fund or something. But so last year was the first year and my you know, 11 years on the board that we dipped into it. That's kind of our savings account. Okay, it's there in case we need it. Well, guess what? We needed it. So, and by law, we can only transfer 50% of that in any given year. So we transferred 50% of it to general fund and, and then transferred that to building because that's where we needed it. So, um, and then we did levy our max three mills. Yes. So we would have added, I think the, I we visited yesterday, we added around $64,000 through the mill levy in 2023. And, um, and now, so now we're asking to take half of it again, move to general, to move to building. And in all likelihood, we'll levy again to replenish it as best we can. So, the motion I'm seeking, uh, we should be able to do all of these transfers in a single motion, do you think? Or do you want to do them all? Separate? I think where I'd like to do them separate. Okay, so we're going to start by, I'll start by entertaining a motion to transfer 50% of the special reserve 
to the general fund in amount of $89,421.79. I'll make that motion. Slider moves. Is there a second? Second. Uh, day second. Uh, any discussion? Again, this is 50% of the, the current balance. Um, max we can transfer by law, and the intent is to move it to general so we can then move it to building to in the building. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. Uh, Heimbuck's absent, Sonny Meal. Yes, the motion passes four to zero. Now I'll entertain a motion to move that same amount, 89,421 and 79 cents from the general fund to the building fund. Is there such a motion? I'll make a motion. Dave moves, is there a second? Second. Uh, Sire seconds. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Rhonda Day. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. Heimbach's absent, Sonny Meal. Yes. Oh, Sheila Nagel. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Next, um, I'll take a motion to move $55,326.61 from the general fund to the hot lunch fund, which will make the hot lunch fund go to zero. Right. Begin, begin the year with a zero balance there. Is there such a motion? Thank you. Sheila Nagel moves. Is there a second? Second. Rhonda Day seconds. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Any discussion? And none, please call the roll. Time books absent, Rhonda Day. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Uh, next, uh, we'll move, we'll, um, seeking a motion to move 229,000. $757.35 from general fund to activities fund to make that account go to zero. Activities to zero. To make up the deficit that has some activities. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Rhonda Day moves. Is there a second? She will make a second. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Brian Sire. Yes. A uh, Heimbuck's absent, Rhonda Day. Yes. Sonny Meal. Yes, motion passes four to zero. Do you, are you seeking a motion to approve the NHS student council and cost function? <laughs> no, that's done for policy. That's, so that's no. all included in that. Oh, I see. Okay. Got it. Okay. Did we approve the budget? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I got it. We did approve the pledge of answers? Yep. And I have it written down here. I have okay. three places on here. Okay. <laughs> You'll get better at okay. those. Oops. Okay. Done with the financial portion of the business meeting. Next. Um, do you want uh, do we want to do three actions on the handbooks or can we do just one? I, I um, think it, on this. I think it can be one. Okay. So item two. Second reading of the elementary, high school, and activities handbooks. I did find a couple of things in the activity handbook that I pointed out yesterday. I sent those to Robin. She's going to clean those up. Um, what was something that was. Oh, Um, on page 12, which was 78 of the packet, referring to MCAP testing, there was a sentence that in the first part of the sentence, it says every two years. And after track and field, it says semi-annually, which means to me twice a year. Um, and I think it's intended to be every two years. So I didn't think that it needed to say. So she's just cleaning up some yep. language related to the timing of impact testing. And then I did find one spot. Oh, in personnel handbook, I found the spot that still said 22, 23, which should say 23, 24. And I asked that they check all the handbooks to make sure the page was. 
So we'll change once you decide on fees, we'll change those in the handbooks. Um, Gregan Jordan added the student achievement goals, but I, if you have any questions about them, they're here, you know. So I'm seeking a motion to approve as second reading and final adoption of the elementary, high school, and activities handbooks subject to the, the uh, editorial yeah. changes and the addition of updated fees that we will approve next. So uh, Nagel moves. Have a Let's have a second. Oh, before, before. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. This is just rumor or whatever, but somebody told me that last year, if you were ineligible, that you could show this looks. Is that just rumor, I hope? Um, well, there was no, in junior high, there was no, um, there was no protocols for if the kids were not passing in class. They, they didn't have an eligibility. So in the junior high, they were able to play, but that's changing this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Okay, is there a second? Second. Uh, Sire second. All right. Any further questions or discussion? I would note that after our June meeting, when we had a first reading, these handbooks were all posted to the website. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for uh, public input mm -hmm. and yeah, overwhelming response. Nothing. Okay. Either one I, or not, I'll pre and get anything. And so mm -hmm. I think it's wise to have, have and people did have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that the responses will be throughout the year. That's when we'll see the complaint. So let's let's you know compile. I'm I'm sure that the administration does as we go through the year. Uh, oh yeah, maybe you know when you do have complaints, you say you know well that's policy and that's how we do it and that's how we they recommend continuing. But sometimes things come to light, like we just mentioned, that do need to be changed and we're responding to those. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's call the roll on this one. Brian Sire. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Heimbuck's absent. Uh, Sheila Nagel. Yes. Sonia Neal. Yes. Motion passed. This is four to zero. Um, oh, a first reading of the employee handbook. We didn't do this before. Huh? Okay, um, we have in our packet of uh, the proposed employee personnel handbook. And I believe change. Were there many changes? Anything was highlighted? Just one. Uh, just one. It was the. Oh yeah, I have the hyperlink at the yeah. bottom. That was a new one. That was the good thing about this is that these are hot links, you know, hyperlinks, and it goes to the change policy because our school boards update their policy. So, you know, it's not, we have to change this to the front paper plus somebody needs information on that, they can just go grab it off the website. Okay, is there a motion to approve the employee personnel handbook as a first reading? Sire moves, is there a second? Day seconds. Any discussion? Um, again, uh, I had noted 2022 to be updated. If there are any other dates that were overlooked, um, any editorial changes? Um, any further discussion? I didn't, you know, check to make sure we have all of the policies. Oh, yeah. Last year I went through and updated all of them to make sure that we had them all. So, yeah, we did that last year. So then Shannon and I made sure that they, you know, that's all in line and that they're all okay. So anything new, we added anything new. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Time books absent. Brian Sire. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. More fun. Preliminary budget review. I'm 
Okay, so we're going to be looking at the TV version. Which yes. means not television, but it means Tom Demoni. <laughs> She'll bring the whole thing tonight. <laughs> I just shared that one. Was it uh, what day is today? Thursday? Is that yesterday? Or the yeah. Day before? It was yesterday. <clears throat> there it is. But then I got emailed from it. So you got to go dig and see. Yeah. I'll send them. Uh, July 18th, uh, just out of here. Here, I'll share the bottom here if I can find it. Well, oh, that's easier. Kind of that <laughs> <laughs> the collective sigh <science> <laughs> We all love her. <laughs> I can find it all the time. When she shares it with me, it's her shoulder with her. Yeah, wait. Oh, here we go. So this is the this is the spreadsheet that Tom shared or created for us last year. Um, so what I have been doing is trying to incorporate um, the the other budget, the like the sixty eight tabs, and I I use that as my kind of the worksheet. And then I, when I calculate the information, then I put it up here because I think this is so much easier to read. So if you look at the 2022-23, the actual, that is the actual income. We had a carryover starting of $823.43. Um, and then you can see all the, the different incomes. That, um, and then... The expenses then are below that with a carryover in the general fund. Can you go down a little bit more, Nana? Anybody think you could make this a little bigger? Uh oh, maybe I try to make it bigger on my view. Yeah, I can tell you if you're in the desktop version, there's a plus down at the bottom. There's a plus. What about what? We have plus. Yeah. Well, that's it's handy a, to know. She's in the web. Oh, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Much okay. better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, no, I don't need those. I think I don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> that's, that's distance. These are for reading notes. Um, and so if you continue to go down, okay. yeah. And the carryover is one. Point two million, almost one point three million dollars. Okay, so that's I. I thought that was very impressive that we went up from eight hundred twenty three thousand ending fund gen, ending general fund balance to one point three million, and I, it it will be interesting to see more detail of where we got additional revenue or less. Well, there's $505,000 of ESSER funds that are in there um, that, I mean, the, the $505,000 of ESSER income is, uh, grant money is also included in the, the uh, general fund income, but it was also, um, you know, without that, without the ESSER funds, we still would have had to pay the $505,000 in teacher salaries 
So it's a little skewed. If you were to take that 1.3 minus the 500,000, okay. it would. But then we'd still almost be even, right? From we're up by 400,000, so we've got to be down by about a million. Uh, and this ending general fund balance of about 1.3 million reflects the transfers that we just approved. Correct. Yep, you'll see. So you'll see right yep, here, there's, the there's their transfer funds that's going to the building, that's going to the hot lunch fund, and that went to uh, the activities fund. Anna, can you scroll up for me, please? Yep. That's fine. Keep going all the way to the top. Yep, keep going though. That's the ESSER expenses because I have to put them in a special account code for web grants and DPI. So here is our income. Um, yep, there's our property taxes. Um, transportation, student, uh, transportation. There was our per pupil aid. Um, and then here, um, 67, let's see, federal title one, title two and two and four got combined, but I had to keep them separate here. There's our ESSER fund income. Um, Where's the special reserve transfer? That's our LERS and FOS. Oh, there it is. Transfer from the special reserve, so it went in, yep. Um, and then this is, well, that is, uh, what the insurance gave us for the chiller repairs. So we had given, we had had the insurance company come out or they did a phone video with Dave to look at the chiller to see because on the chiller and the boiler. And we got so, some, we didn't know. Mm, I'm sorry. We didn't yes. Know. Was that very recently or was this, yes. this wasn't related to something that we- No, know. that was just in June or May. Uh, oh. When did the chiller? June, it had to have been June. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think that was discussed. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I knew that it's, I was, it's, that we yes. got turned in a claim, but- Yes, we got turned in a claim and they said, so now of course um, we have a, a chiller and we got claimed on it. We are not fixing it. They are aware of that. The insurance company is aware of that. But so we can basically cannot put a claim in on that chiller again right. because we aren't fixing it, which huh. it doesn't work. So, um, okay, so we are in. So, so let me let me ask you a little more about that. Should that really go into the building firm? I tossed that around a little bit, but the insurance, the insurance uh, premium is paid from the general fund. So I was told at one time to put that where your insurance and premiums are coming okay. from. Okay, so, so, I guess, so, but we yeah. could conceivably transfer as we just transferred from special to general and general to building, we could conceivably transfer to building because we're at negative on building, right? Um, as the building, let's see, building. And isn't that where we'll pay? Yeah, if we for the new one, correct. Or if we got a new one, or we would pay with all of the As of June 30th, our building funds is including with the transfers that we just that was just approved of 89,421.79 it still is a negative Anna can you keep going down yeah go in this column here. Oh, sorry. nope that's okay keep going oh yeah this is general fund there's the special reserve that was our income for the year for our three three mills that were levied that was the transfer that was just approved. The building fund started at negative 200,000. We had levies of uh, 20 mills for 443,000 uh, income. Um, we had the track donation from Starion, insurance recovery. So now this one was the car because no, that's not the car. I can't remember off the top of my head what that one is. The auditor had me make a journal entry. 
make uh, from the audit in 2019, 2020. So I had to enter that in there. Keep going a little bit farther. Okay, so here's our expenditures so far for the year. Uh, as of June 30th, our building fund is still in the negative at $36,000. So if we would go down the path of renting a chiller, that would be an operational expense. But if we were to buy a chiller, that we would come out of building. So I'm not really sure. I, I don't think it really matters a lot at this point, but I mean, we know we're negative in building. Surplus and the earth surplus increase in the general, but I you know, we see why. And we could very well easily charge for that on our cost. I mean, we could do that at any time if you want to do a little more research on it. And but it would so if we wanted to, we wanted it to be reflective in June 30th of 2023. Is this starting to make a little more sense now that yeah, we can yeah, see the, the yeah, funds together? Okay, can you scroll up for me? We missed, uh, oh, that was special. Review. Nope, I'm sorry, keep okay. going down. Let's go to the, I think hot lunch is next. So there's where we had our carryover, our, expense, our income. And then, so here's where you were looking for your wages, Brian. Yes. And then the benefits. What's the purpose of having a hot lunch account? Century code says hot lunch has to have its own okay. fund. You'll notice we get grants there, federal grants for breakfast and lunch, fruit and vegetables. Yep. Um, Non-food assistance. I don't know what that is, but you know that's that flows into that because that's what it has to be right. used for. Yep. And it's always kind of baffled me why others put their pay, they don't pay their salaries for their kitchen staff. That was just the one. Uh, that was one school that that had met, commented that, but they said, "Oh yeah, we're in the black, but we pay our our hot lunch out of the general fund," which I saw a lot, but. That's their deal, I guess. Okay, Anna, can you scroll down? Then yep. we'll hit the activities fund. So we started our activity fund balance was $40,000. That was most likely the student council, the class, the three or the four or five classes that were still in there. Um, student council, National Honor Society, the classes. I think is what made up that $40,000. And then the total income that activities between um, that income on this actually includes the 229,000 that we just transferred. The income there is gate fees, um, oh. participation fees. Yeah, there is a line transfer from general, so maybe. Oh, may I, I should probably, okay. Oh yeah, I should take that out. Yep, yep. So then that would be a more uh, a more accurate number of what that would be. Um, gate fees, participation fees. Um, if a, if a, any donations, if there is um, if a sport or activity goes to state, we are reimbursed from the the high school association, um, and so then they they send a spreadsheet out of the it must have came in May I'm guessing, and it. It gives you a per diem kind of for taking your kids to state. So then I took those and put those into each respective activity because um, they had them broke out. I think it was around $3,000. So the transfers must be in the other years as well. Yeah, because there's no way that. Yeah. I mean, our income. Can I think I put that on there because if you see, I have this right here. It would be great if Better I would update those, okay. those previous okay. months. Yep. Very good. Yep. I because this is our, our next year's budget and that's what I have us for but I've okay. yep. I believe when I was first on the board, Art Conklin said it's not gonna go over a hundred and eighty. 
<laughs> and then I haven't done anything to the trust and agencies. This um, this is the ending fund balance, but this is uh, this is our dedicated fund. So there are uh, this would include PTO funds, which we really we we I I take care of and I write checks when they tell me to and I deposit or carry deposits when they tell her to, but we don't don't take any of it. We don't use any of it. We don't. So I, I really have done nothing for this. And I, last year, that was the same thing. It was just a hundred and a hundred out because we don't, we don't control. We don't have any idea what their budget are, what their plans are or anything. So. And that's the last thing. Okay, good information. Um, so that is our preliminary budget review. So we've identified maybe a couple things we'd like to see presented differently on the historical and Shannon still working on um, line by line, the 23-24 projected budget, right? Yeah, what was the historical again? So I can write that down. The things we want to change or, yeah. uh, well, the, the activity the transfer. transfer okay, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's slide back up to okay, the $101,000 insurance uh, claim revenue that went into general. So, what, it's what would way up be towards the, the top? What would be the negative about us transferring that to building? Our building would then go to positive, which we know we'll use it, um, and our ending no, general no, fund balance. Okay will actually still be higher than it was last year. Oh, do you want to, did you want to go down to the building fund? You know, go up, go all the way up. To the end of our very top. There it is right there. Okay, but go go all the way to the top so we can see the, oh no, this is, no, this is income. Did you just want building? No, no, no. Um, this what is I, the general fund. This is general fund. So the 101,000, Seven eighty and forty nine cents. So what I'm okay. So now, if we keep that amount in our mind, forty nine cents, and we go down to the general fund, beginning and ending, and and building, but but we, so our oh, the our negative our building at a negative sixty six would go to a thirty five yeah. thirty about a positive thirty five thousand. And our general would go from about <clears throat> 1.3 million down to um, 1.2, just under 1.2, which is neither of those are bad things, right? <clears throat> what are your thoughts, Shannon and Anna? Well, if I remember, Tom said too that you can go into the negative on your building, but they kind of brown on it. So they yeah. kind of gave us the okay for that one year. I think it was Adam Tesher that said, I think. Yeah, but maybe yeah, try to rectify that. that. But I like the idea of moving that insurance over because personally, I don't see us renting the new interest. I, so I would rather have that there to use it towards the cost of whatever we do with that show. And I would like to see it in last fiscal year. Yeah. Then this current fiscal And that's, yeah, I, 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 I was, I hurried and I walked it over to starting because I wanted it in last year since the stimulation started writing goals, et cetera. Okay, so we've identified um, that we, uh, I see then a motion to transfer $101,780.49 representing the insurance claim revenue on Schiller from general to building fund. For the June 20, uh, the 2023 fiscal year. And Nagel makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Day second. Is there any discussion? <laughs> you can <laughs> exercise. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I, I don't see any downside to this. Okay. And cleaning up and putting our building in a positive. Um, and ESSER funds are have all been accounted for appropriately, so we can't say, oh, no, you took those ESSER funds to do that. That isn't, you've accounted for all that. Correct. The, and the, the ESSER funds have been 
depleted and or drawn down with the exception of learning loss with 50, almost 58,000. But that can't, I mean, that has to be under learning loss um, activities. So there is, so as far as, the, you know, anything else, there's, we can't take, there's no more to draw down. Okay. All right. So any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Uh, Sheila Nagel. Yes. Monica Heimbuchs absent. Brian Sire. Yes. Rhonda Day. Yes. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the preliminary budget review? Oh, do you need us to oh. approve that? It says action. Yeah. Actually, that was I, that was just kind of the June financials that I went through. The okay. budget. Then. Oh, can oh. we go back to that, Anna? Maybe. I couldn't get it to open because it said Excel, and I was like, I'm not logging into Excel. I'm not. <laughs> Should okay, can you go all the way to the top, please? Yes. I can't. Okay. You can sign in, but I'll just put it Okay, that's what I was wondering, and then I thought they popped it up, so I saw it. Stopped. <laughs> yes. Oh, so you still are you using? It's in the Brian got tired people. Yeah. Okay, because okay. you're using that email. Yeah. Right, right. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so then obviously this number will change. This will go down 101,000. I took the property taxes. I took 70 mills. I, I went up about, um, I think it took like a 3% increase because I looked at Dickey County and I think I think Lamore County went up four and a half, but you know, they're only at not even a million dollars in land value. So, or property value. Um, so until I hear from the other two counties, if I do, um, that's at 70 mills. Um, driver's education, um, I, I think, oh, you don't have the little squares on there. Um, that I took, I think I, I asked, I think it's $150 and I can't remember if we were going to go up the driver's side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's $150 times whatever. I think there were 30 kids is what we're estimating next year. Um, interest income, we did really well this year. Um, so I just bumped it up a little bit since we've still got the ESSER funds sitting in there. Um, the SRCTC, um, I did change the rental income. It's just over $3,500 a month for rent. For pupil aid, well, let's keep going to transportation. This uh, comes right off the transportation report. I plugged it in the, in the state aid worksheet, worksheet. So that should be pretty close. Title five, we don't have notification or have you gotten notification? Not yet. Nope, it's not on one ground. So I just used what we did last year. Uh, REAP, this is notification. I don't remember what A and P stand for. Um, we have half of this year's left and all of next year's. So that's that number. Um, federal title grant, we don't have that number. I just used the same what we were granted last year. 57, oh, that's our learning loss that's left. That has to be used. This is by the end of this year, I think, right, June of 24? 24 or 25, but we have all, yeah, we've got a year take pretty good. E-rate, um, we had applied in January, I think. Um, we had DRN come in last week and they did, they're moving the elementary wiring closet. Anyways, it was a 2000, well, that's half of it. And so as soon as they're done or as soon as DRN builds me, then I'll be able to apply for the, the grant. And uh, whoops, where'd we go? Oh, okay. Oh, the bus grants. So this is going to this includes 
um, the clean diesel grant of 22,000 and then the other grant, the VW grant that Brett from iState tells us it might be November, December when we get our new bus. So then once we get that new bus, obviously then we'll dismantle the other one and we'll get the, the rest of the grant. Those are those two grants together. Um, this is just a, a um, Cheyenne or uh, There's not your subs, right? Oh yes, yes, that's what that is. Yep. Okay. We don't have a number in there for twenty two twenty three. Yeah. <sighs> Shannon put it in a different account. Twenty two twenty three. So it's there somewhere. It's it's in there, but it didn't go to that account. That was here in the foggy time of the. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, um, so let's go back up here to per pupil nine. <clears throat> so I was able to take, oh, here's my driver's ed, was 40, 40 students at $150. Um, the other federal revenue that is on there at $30,000, that is uh, what's remaining of our choice ready grant, the PCBL grant, and the science of reading grant. The REAP, E rate, and the VW. The VW grant will be 53,000, and then the clean air is 22,000. Okay, so now I'll go up to the student aid of 4.5. So I've completed, <clears throat> excuse me, the worksheet. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's this complicated little bugger. Um, I've, I've plugged in all the numbers from the STARS on the, um, for our ADM. Um, and then I, I kind of reached out to a couple of people on different things for revenue or estimations on the total revenue for our electricity, our electric generation, mobile home and telecommunications. And then I was able to plug in um, our contributions from, well, we, I don't even get to do that. They use the valuation of our district taxable valuation from 2022 was $22,721,596. And it takes 60 mils. So that comes up to $1.36 million. And so they deduct that from our student, our state student aid. So the worksheet comes up with $4.6 million. And what was our aid? What was our ADM? ADM would be the total average daily membership for. This coming school year is estimated to be 485.70 as a weighted ADM. What was it last year? Oh, yeah. And then they'll, this is, this is like a moving target, you know, because then they adjust for your average daily membership in September, and then they adjust yeah. for it in the spring, and, you know, there's, there's adjustments that will go on there. We're getting a fairly a, a recognizable increase despite a reduction of about 20 students estimated in the average. Be diligent the dollars. And then you can see the difference then between the <clears throat> we're still obviously this includes your, your Esther numbers too. Okay, let's uh, keep going down, Anna. So this is the hard, this is the, the hard parts are the, the kindergarten, the elementary, these guys are, I'm working on them. Uh, this will really be, I could have plugged that because that'll be the exact number that the grant is. Um, same with the REAP, Title I, all of these will be the same. Um, we have no more ESSER dollars. We would have the $60,000 of learning loss. Okay, keep going. Okay. 
Cheyenne Valley. Um, we had gone up. I had to go up. Um, did you tell me to go down last year? Or? Well, they said to budget for the same amount. They're not expecting an overage like last year, but they'll budget for it. And keep in mind that this this line item for Cheyenne Valley Special Ed is over and above mm -hmm. a significant dollar amount that the state withholds okay. from our <clears throat> state aid. And we can tell you that number is would have to budget. Okay, so then I'm going to try and find my SRCTC. Okay, this is where I switch back to the tabs. One point nine seven, I think, is something more than Well, let's go to the next one and I'll keep trying to find my, where I came up. But our goal here is you are going to need, oh, are you going to need a, a an approval of this as a first reading? I think we had the first reading last mm -hmm. month. Oh, okay. So we need action on this. This is different yeah. information. Yeah. Well, and then I, right? yeah. Yeah. good information. Go, go up, a, let's see, where are we? Special, okay go up a little bit more. So I was able to get a couple of them. I started obviously easy. I can go to my own business manager. I plugged in my own salary, um, social security, um, TFFR, or not TFFR, hers, which um, the employer's percentage goes up by 1% on January 1st. So instead of 8.26 for hers, the school will then have to pay 9.26. For PERS retirement. And the employee stays the same. So that would be reflective in that $113,000. But that's across the board for all uh, non certified staff. Last night on the budget, is in that? So yeah, that's that makes up seventy thousand dollars in salary, ninety four hundred dollars for health insurance, social security, hers, one hundred and fifty some dollars for workforce safety, a flex the flex account, uh, travel at twenty two hundred. I did move that up a little bit from what we had budgeted before, um, because I uh, we had budgeted thirteen hundred last year, and I I spent twenty one hundred dollars in travel. Most of that is part of that for, for software for the training and um, this certification training. So, um, supplies and accounting software. Um, it, um, it was budgeted at 6,000. I spent 8,300. Um, and so I budgeted 6,500. A lot of that was just trying to get different computers and stands. Equipment, I left at 2000, I only spent 1200 last, last dues fees was at 9,000. Um, I know there were some, some, some fees that um, were put in there that made it to 13,000, almost $14,000. I think there were some journal entries last year that were plugged in there and 
So what you're doing right now is detailing, detailing your, your 200, 113,000. Yep. And, so and I don't know if you guys want to know all that. I mean, I was able yeah. to go into the superintendent one and do kind of the same yeah. thing. So you're doing yep. that with every single line item. You're going through all that level of detail mm -hmm. before you populate the final number. Into Correct. The yep. 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 And so those are those were the hardest parts. So I got all the uh, what I considered the easy part um, done, and then now it's just a matter of going through the custodians, uh, the principal, the elementary, the principals wouldn't really be hard, or the the you know some of the ones where there's the fewer uh, employees or teachers or staff are are easier. I mean, uh, Larry's just got himself and some um, you know Virginia. So looking at the school board line item, I see we were at 183,000. Now, when, when I've looked at the detail of a school board, a lot of it, it's not school board. A lot of it is, it's, it's just central supplies and a lot of things that are just district wide. But why is that up so much? Okay, so uh, school board, we have, so in there we had, that's where we have the apps and software fees. It's a district wide apps. Um, budgeted was uh, $40,000. Some of the, um, we didn't spend just about 20,000, but I, I think some of the budget, some of the elementary and high school, maybe I put some of the apps where they perhaps should have been in here as opposed to the elementary and the high schools. The board members are just $50 a meeting. We budgeted 3000 last year. We only spent $1,600. Um, then there's Social Security. Uh, the unemployment costs go here. Um, professional development was only budgeted 3000 It went up to 5100 this year. And professional I development for the board. For the board. Yeah. This is all the board. Yep. You know, and that that includes uh, the Be Legendary grant, what we had to pay, and then the half of our um, growing small town food, that type of thing. Um, legal uh, was, we only spent $3,300 in legal. Um, we spent, we actually had nothing budgeted in um, audit fees. Yeah. And that bill came in at eighteen thousand dollars, so that was a little bit of a hit on the budget. Um, consultations we had there was five thousand dollars budgeted. We spent ten. Is ICS in there? Um, I'm guessing that's where that one is. I'm not. I don't have the detail of what the ten thousand dollars is. But yep. Um, the liability insurance was almost right on. Um, Publishing and printing was double. We we budgeted six grand and we spent almost thirteen. So some of that is and advertising think, for uh, employment and the Oaks Times. And it's almost all Oaks Times, but I would imagine between, you know the minutes and the advertising is probably a big thing. And every bid I have to put out goes out there every every week. We get billed for an ad. Travel was up. We budgeted two thousand. Um, there was twenty six hundred, um, but we did a lot of we did a lot of activities this year. Central purchases was uh, bid or uh, budgeted at twenty five grand, and we only spent twenty one three twenty one thousand. That's our office. Supplies. That's your office supplies. The yep, you know, paper, white marker, whiteboard markers, construction paper, poly. All right, this is a lot of detail. Yeah. I, I, so you see the process she's going through to figure out what to populate into this. And, uh, and we're not looking for action on this right now. So. All right, so um, that completes item four of the business meeting. So then if we, uh, item five, can we, are you, does anybody want to pull one or more of these A through H items out for individual action, or are can we make a um, single motion for approval of all? Yeah, I was gonna. I that yeah. Um, we'll take a five minute recess.
two of them are four fifty. But okay, we talked again too. If you go out to key stuff to get a salad, you're gonna like we went there and ate the other day and I had salad and drink. It was fifteen dollars. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and we paid three seventy five for a, a, an adult lunch. Mm -hmm. I would actually like to see that go up fifty cents to four and a quarter. That's what I was saying. And I think the salad bar only should go up too. Okay. That fresh stuff is expensive. Okay, so adult that four twenty five, right? Is that what it was? Four twenty five a meal. Four twenty five. Four twenty five. I would say I would suggest four fifty. Do not get reimbursement for adult meals. Yeah. So that's all just coming in. That's staff and parents, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it's cheaper in the free session. Mm -hmm. yeah. So four fifty for an adult meal. I don't know if that's right. Can you hand me one if you don't mind if I know that was me? So adult meal. And what did you say for the salad bar? I don't know. What is it now? Two. 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 If you scroll one more page. Two. So then breakfast would be three twenty-five. Three twenty-five for breakfast. So adult meals now. Where what's on the table is four fifty for a, an adult lunch and three twenty-five for an adult breakfast. Okay. Mm -hmm. She would propose two fifty for salad bar only. That's me. Just throwing out some things so we can keep moving here. Yeah. Yeah. Two fifty. Yep. Yeah. But other than that, we're um, well, we're just suggesting to approve the changes as proposed, other than the adult uh, meal. But how come we aren't going to change our activity path? Um, changed everything else. I, yeah, well, uh, Robin had done her research, and I think that we're very similar to other schools. Even she did for activity tickets. You know, there are some schools that are seven and five, but most are six and four. But there's nothing saying that we can't. You know, we just use area schools to. Um, did we go up last year? We did. That was another thing that Robin said. Let's. She felt like. We we did it already last year, and remember last year we added the student pass. Right. And um, we, did we add seniors last? Time? We've had seniors yeah. for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will tell you on the activity and participation. Um, this year, um, because of shortage of bus drivers, also you know our rising costs. So for elementary sports, we are no longer going to pay the bus driver because it you know it's kind of morphed into um elementary. The bus driver was paid. There were also paid sitting. They were also so we're not going to pay elementary bus drivers anymore. Um, and they have to find their own bus drivers because Dave is that struggles to do that. So any of our elementary sports that pay participation fees, so you can see their volleyball, girls basketball, boys basketball pay participation fees. If they pay a participation fee for that sport, we will give them the bus and the gas. We're not going to charge them for that. But we're not going to pay a bus driver anymore, and they have to find their bus driver. And it's just going to be all volunteer. And if they can't find a bus driver, or they can't find it. They're going to have to drive their kids in their car. Now, wrestling and football are different because they don't pay participation fees to the school, so they're going to have to pay fuel for the bus along with their driver. You know, because we don't take in any money from those. But the reason for the rise in the fees is to pay for the fuel for those buses. So why don't we take in activity fees for football and wrestling? They've always just done their own activity fees and and linebackers and the and the wrestling oh, club are sponsor those. Okay. Yes, yeah, same thing for that. Mm -hmm. But we will still, if they want to do a bus, they'll you know we'll go through that. They're just going to have to pay the fuel for the the buses, and you know obviously we're going to eat the cost of the bus driving there besides the fuel, but which just maybe a way to recoup it. But if Robin's going to talk to linebackers and she's going to talk with um, wrestling and just say, hey, we'll offer you the same thing. You pay your activity fees to us. We'll, we'll pay for your fuel and your bus. And is there, does Tornado Watch or some other entity still, if, if students, whether they be elementary, junior high or high school are identified that cannot or that are on, aren't going to participate may not participate because of uh, difficulty paying participation fees. Are there ways to identify those get them scholarships, yes. so to speak? <laughs> and grading, I was like, yeah, they need to support a lot. Okay. 
So I don't, if you want to do activity passes or admission, that would be up to you guys. But, and the driver's ed, we're going to raise the driver's ed fee again. So there's some recovery data. All right, so you have the proposed changes before you. We made a couple of um, changes to the proposal. So again, um, if we can act on items A through H in a single motion, that would be fine. If anyone wants to pull out one or more of those for more discussion, I think the Computer Insurance Technology Committee has done a really good job of, of identifying and proposing good solutions there. Uh, it sounds like Activities have done a lot of due diligence. So we've raised the full the adult price to 450, salad bar to adult salad bar to 250, and adult breakfast to 350. Are those the changes? I thought it's 325. Oh, okay. Didn't turn 75 cents on this. Nice. Does anybody see a problem with raising the activity fees $10 for each one? Nothing else in this world is going down. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot easier to make small increments than big starts. It's not 45 or 35. No, 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 activity passes. passes sorry. No. Great. Oh, yeah, there's 35. Oh, okay. I, I was thinking uh, family. And single, yeah, maybe home. leave student and senior alone. Yeah. Family 160 and single 80. So then, if you have two singles, like a, a, a husband and wife, yeah. with no, then, then you have to pay the family. Manager. You pay, well, no, oh. then you pay two singles at 75. Why did you say? But I, I'm going to qualify for a senior. So that's why I'm. Seniors. So do you want 80 or 75? 75. We raised it last year from what? Oh, yeah, you know, senior. Oh, now you're not your one. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I know. Okay, so is everyone clear on what what changes we've made to the proposal? Sure. Yes. Yes. Admission right. price is still the same. You want to go up with your admission? I don't think so. No, you were right. I don't know. What do you okay. Say? Um, what are we doing with junior high? I I know it's difficult. Yes, we, we have been charging for junior high, but it's difficult to get people to be at the ticket desk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I. I would be willing to be at the ticket desk at times now. I think I should have time, but I, I'm not going to commit to doing every one. So, you know, Robin and I, and we've had discussions about this, and we can, we'll can continue to have discussions is paying, um, okay, I'm going to use Joseph Dobitz. Hey, Joseph, if you'll sit at that game, and you'll sit at a junior high game, we'll either pay him or we'll let him have something from the concession stand or a pass. So Robin and I have talked about that, too. Mm -hmm. Or offering to a family that maybe can't afford a family pass. Um, telling them, hey, if you'll work like four different games or whatever, we would come up with that, um, then they would get a family pass. Well, and then at, at those events, instead of putting the ticket booth out in the lobby, put it in the sure. gym, like if it's in the North Gym. And, you know, even if people aren't walking by, well, they will, because we don't use the bleachers on the East. So they would have to come over to the West side of the gym. And here's where you pay your admission. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't get every single one. Robin and I will work together on some of that stuff. We've talked to Carrie about how we can work for, but I think, I mean, we need the income, right? So if, if you we can, can be there for- At junior high events, take in at least mm -hmm. enough to pay your bills. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and I, I don't want to give them take time off the board to say, well, should it be four and six at a junior high event? You mm -hmm. guys decide that. Yeah. I, but it yeah. can be less, but mm -hmm. I, I think we should try to get okay. enough revenue at least to pay our okay. main officials. All right. It seemed to work out well last year that um, out of track, Evan tops it right now. <laughs> 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 it was kind of funny. All right. Okay. Um, then, so if, if 
if there is a motion to approve all of the fees that we have discussed and the changes we've discussed, is there such a motion? Sire moves, is there a second? Second, Nagel seconds. So is there any further discussion? Now that we have a motion on the floor, we can start discussing. <laughs> any further discussion? Um, it sounds to me like due diligence has been done on, uh, by all departments in uh, justifying these proposals. Um, and, and in addition to the changes the board has proposed today and uh, that uh, students whose families cannot afford participation fees, there are also alternatives for them because I don't want them to not be able to participate. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, let's call the roll one more time. All righty. Brian Sire. Yes. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Uh, Heimbuck's absent. Sonny Meal. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Now, 21 22 and 22 23, two year audit bid. All right. We didn't have anything in our packet or anywhere else. I'm just going to say it's red, but I never found it. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Well, because the bid closing closed yesterday. Uh -oh. So we received one bid oh. from Nadine Julson LLC to do um, a, the two year audit June 2022 to 20. Or bid. <laughs> <laughs> Years ending 2022 and 2023. Excuse me. Um, they both of them um, will have to be done as a single year audit because of our income is over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Federal. Federal income was over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and the loan bid came in at twenty eight thousand dollars. For two audits, correct. Not $28,000 per yeah. audit. No, $28,000 for both audits for the two years. Possibly. Yes. <laughs> we are submitting a bid of 28 grand for the years ending June 30, 2022 to 2023. Because we just finished 2021, we have to get 2022. And I said 2023 will be done in middle of all the But again, they are also. More involved, their, their last one was more involved because it has to be a single year on it. Okay, and you need approval of I do. Okay, is there a motion to approve uh, the audit bid from Nadine Julton LLC? Okay. Nagel moves. Is there a second? Days, seconds. Any discussion? It would be interesting to know how many dollars public entities pay and say in total for all of the right. audits. Even if you get audited by the state, it sounds like those are even more expensive. Yes. And that's the company that did that last audit. Correct. Right. And what did they charge for the one year? It, uh, it was two years. Oh, it was two yeah, years. It was eight, eighteen thousand. It was a two-year audit. Ten thousand of... dollar increase. One of the years was a two one year? of the year it was, was a single year. Yes, there yeah. really two audits. Yes, they're doing, they're doing an audit for 21, 22 yeah. school year, and then you have to do another audit because we need more than a million dollars in federal funds, or we could do more than a million dollars in federal funds. So they don't necessarily audit them together, they're auditing two years because, yeah. um, in prior history, if you weren't Above that seven hundred fifty thousand dollars threshold or threshold, you could you just needed to have an audit every other year, a year for two years. Sure. Okay. Once basically ESSER monies came around and we we hit that seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, he has to audit each year. Well, they have to audit each year, but yeah. that last year that we just had done hit that seven hundred fifty. There's more work to do. Um, because of that meeting that threshold. So 
the last audit they did, we did meet that threshold. Yeah. The in last of, year. In one of the two years. Yeah. And this, so, in this audit, we'll have two of the two oh, years. Yeah. And we already know that we hit that 750000 so What is their justification of $10,000? I, he originally told me when I first started, it was he thought we didn't have a bid. So he, I just asked him, you know, what, what was your, so, I didn't. You did? Because we had several, we actually had all Well, we engaged board. somebody else. But yeah, that, but we put it out for oh, bids because we had a bid oh, from we I, from we had a bid from them. Uh, there was at least just one other one. Yeah. We had, you bet oh, you. We did. But those were a lot more. Oh, a lot more. Oh, my really? goodness. Really? Oh, every schools are talking about across the nation. Across the state. Yeah. I mean, didn't, that's, this was the only bit they got. This is the only bit. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, we have to, we have oh, that's required. And that's just the odd of them. But do we have to accept it for the timeline? For, you know, you said it would, it came, the bid had to be in yesterday. Yesterday, yes. So can we ask them for justification of ten thousand dollars? Oh, don't make them mad. Nobody does it. I know, but how much I, I more work because they already had the initial work done, right? They already have a portfolio made for us. A point. Well, I think each year is is different. He even has to go through the accounts, and I mean, yeah, he's familiar with us, and you know, familiar with me, I guess. But he, I don't remember. Did they issue one or two reports last? Just this last week, or this last month? Yeah, it was just one report. Yeah. One report. For yeah. Game, it was a compilation. And this will be two weeks. Yeah. So that was 18,000 for one. And this is a two reports. Two. So it's actually Yes, yeah, so they issued two reports. Two reports. Oh, I thought said it was for two years. One report. Combined with the report. Yes. Because each report is filed separately then with the Federal Audit Committee and then with the state. And then there's the gas B uh, 34, I think he has to buy. Good questions, Brian. I'm I'm doubtful that we'll get any more bidders or that anybody would do it for less, but um, the timing of this do you, do you are we do you feel we need to approve it today? I, I don't I don't know that we're gonna do any better. I think I think we have to because I think uh, if I remember the bid said we would uh it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he could get started so that he could finish by December before tax season starts and then we get stuck waiting because they are due June 30. Uh, so each year the let's see 20 21 to 22 would be due coming June. So in order to get them done, I mean, they gave us a kind of a, a grace because of the turnover and everything, but they were late. But we do. Right, what are your wishes? Is there a motion? Oh, do we have a motion? Yeah, we have a motion and a second. I haven't yet. Yeah, and Dave. Dave and Dave motion. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Rhonda Day. Yes. Monica Heimbach is absent. Sheila Nagel. Yes. Brian Sire. Sonia Neal. Yes, motion passes. Four to zero. I can't say. Four to zero. I know, but I don't <laughs> know enough about it. So. Okay, staffing update. So we huge hole, but Bobby is working very hard and diligently and running all the systems, but Reed is afloat in a lot of stuff and say there's a lot of outsourcing. We need robust for us. We need mold. We need uh, he's a really good guy. I'm going to miss the first one he is, especially. And then we even do it, so he's going to do it. So that was just for your information. Open positions. Okay, I said I would give you some updates on the open positions. 
we do, did lose an assistant cook. Trisha came and decided to stay home with her baby. I can't remember that, right? We still need, um, so for custodians, um, we're going to maybe do some switching around. Um, we think we have somebody for the lunch clerk position, but uh, we'll know more on that next month. Special ed, we did hire a high school special ed teacher. We interviewed um, and he accepted the position. We are still looking for five and a half paraprofessionals. We did hire a half time for a paraprofessional. We've got some ideas on what we're going to do. Um, uh, Greg is working on that as well as Jordan at a higher coaching. You can see the things that we have for coaching. Football, junior high. So, Greg's working on those things, but we still have positions that are super important that we fill because we're just going to be running short um, route bus drivers. We'll talk more about buses tonight at the thing, but if we don't have enough route bus drivers, we may end up having to consolidate routes, possibly cutting out um, busing. We just don't have enough bus drivers to drive or activities if we don't have people to drive the activities. So for uh, uh, kitchen staff, then we're actually that one. A cook or an assistant? An assistant cook and the lunch clerk, which so, was McKenzie. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we think we maybe have that one filled and going to do some custodial work too to make a full time position because McKenzie was his position is going to be part time. So well, Dave and Chen and I are working on that. But assistant cook, that's out there. We have all of these things. Oh, English teacher, we're still short that, but I think we've got that taken care of. Jordan's been working really hard on getting the schedule and getting people moved so they can teach those courses. And, um, you know, we've gotten some applications from the Philippines, but it's just the timeline's too short in order for them. So maybe possibly that'll be an option for next year, but for now, we're, we're going to go with what we've got and what Jordan teaches. Could, could you possibly uh, do it for starting? In the second semester? Well, yeah. that's a really good question. Uh, thought about that, but also then what if we get like the December grad? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You could maybe get a December graduate. Yeah. So I'm not going to. You'd have to we'll figure out completely that. change around a lot of yeah. schedules. Yeah. I mean, because we're changing schedules for a full year to make this work. And then you'd have to change it mid year, which would be. Uh, might be and then. Would it also affect the classroom too? I mean, because you've got your lesson at my own. And our our staff is been very good about it. I think so far, you know, they have the understanding. They know that we've tried to find them. So we're not going to do what they need to do to help out too. Oh, one last. Yeah. Um, and you're having an open house. For Cheyenne Valley parents, they're coming down. What day is that on the way? Thirty first, it's the night of the thirty first from yeah. four to seven. It'd be great if you guys would help uh, broadcast that message. People, anybody interested um, that would like to know more about the job, you can interview on the spot. Um, we just want people to come in and see what it's like or see what it's about and ask questions. At our last board meeting, we are changing or in the works of adjusting our salary schedule so that the uh, paraprofessionals will get credit for doing extra um, coursework, you know, trying to give them extra pay incentive, also making sure that we communicate fully to the applicants, like, okay, so you get paid a full family or a full um, single insurance, you know, and you get uh, retirement and, you know, to let them know instead of just $14 an hour. There's benefits that accompany it too that other jobs don't have that. So we're trying to market super hard on that. But these, again, these guys are working hard on trying to figure out what we're going to do. And teachers are just going to have to end up filling spots and there's going to be rearranged you know, schedules. Do we need a motion? Yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't think so, right? Because sure. that is like I can move that pay correctly, right? But That's if right. so, do you think we do? I don't think the driver's ed because it's not on the contract, right? You're talking, you're talking about the, the instructor, the instructor pay. pay. I think yeah. you can make that. Okay, if I find that differently, we can bring it back. Okay. Okay. It'll be for next year. Yeah, I'll put that down. Next year.
just know that they're one that's not listed in the minutes. Okay, that is the end of the items for action and review on this agenda. Um, items for future agenda um, evaluation models for superintendent and business manager. We're going to talk about in August. Mm -hmm. um, future meetings. We have our board ret retreat this evening. I would add that I, I've been notified, and I think the rest of you, other than Brian, probably should have been notified about the innovative education uh, seminar, the, the statewide innovative education, whatever you call, they call it, um, in Fargo on August the 15th. Okay. And it should have, okay. So it's the reason I think I got it is, well, I get it just because I do for maybe other reasons, but because we, uh, our entire board attended the Be Legendary training, I think we will be recognized and if so we can all stand up on stage and get a certificate. Or, yeah. yeah. So I'm really busy. I'll nominate Rhonda. Really really <laughs> <You're laughs> terribly busy. Lately. It's all day long. Oh, yeah. I'm super booked. <laughs> well, okay. Then um, I just wanted to make you aware of it. I will share it out with you just so you so you know. But we probably will get some kind of a certificate in our board room. Also, on the same note, you know, we had talked after our training that we would not, or at least the administration and I had talked about not investing in the continued paying for the continued coaching from Be Legendary. Somehow the state now is willing to pay for the first year of continued coaching, which was a was it eight or ten thousand oh, wow. dollar. So, so we, the three of us said, well. Why? Why wouldn't we? And, but we'll we'll I'll have them do more research and see if um, they think they can find value in that. Um, yeah. Which would I think would be uh, involve a lot of the the agenda and the advance notice and the the, the consent agenda and the time you know, we, how much time we're spending at meetings talking about uh, student achievement and so on, which would not done a lot of that at this board meeting, but we've That's done really good. 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 But, but this was, <laughs> this is a special, uh, yeah, I mean, um, taken longer than I thought, but we've gotten through a lot of things. Um, with that, then our regular meeting in August would be scheduled for the 17th. However, uh, we do need to meet and approve the budget to be submitted to the county. Preliminary the budget. Preliminary budget mm -hmm. and tax levy and tax levy, right? Tax levy meeting, right? When does that have to be done? Well, that's September. Okay. That has to be in September. But, but that's what we're submitting to the county, too, is our budget as yeah. well as our tax the certificate. Of, yep. Okay. And that it's submitted in August so that the tax, the estimated tax, real estate tax documents can be prepared and sent out to the taxpayers who can then come to our hearing and tell us, oh, it's too much um, for all of the tax incentives. So we'll have, so we do need to meet before August the 10th, on or before August the 10th. I think we, last meeting, we actually scheduled it for August 8th, because I already have it on my phone. Okay. Tuesday, August 8th. That's what we're starting. Okay. So I won't be. Dave, did you join virtually or no? Okay. If we changed it to the 10th, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. And hopefully Monica will be able to be here. Otherwise, we'll still have a quorum. It's the three of us. And that will be, well, do we want to call that? I think maybe we should call that, should that be a special meeting? Because uh, we want to talk about, or, or do we want to make this our regular meeting? I don't know. That would be, well, special, wow. Well. Make it our regular meeting. Regular would be okay. easier. 8, 8, Tuesday at 7 a.m. Okay. Um, then our September meeting would be the 21st. Wait, no, we're going to go to the Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. Friday. Right. Then, right? 
at 7 a.m. to 9 15 at Saturday. 15? No, 22nd, the third, third Friday. The third Friday is 15. Oh, you're right. I had, yeah, got it. 15. That'll be our, um, that'll be like our practice month. If you said, play it, so it'd be so kind there's, of our there's, uh, there's probably no way in that you're going to get the meeting, the information two weeks in advance because no. I don't see it has to come on up first. But, yeah. but there's a, a, a holiday in there. Yeah. Um, also, we will okay. need to April. schedule, we'll probably schedule our hearing. Our tax hearing. Our tax hearing on the, that day after the meeting. Got my point. <laughs> 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 like, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, she's on that side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll check and see. It has to be in the tax hearing is. We're getting silly. <laughs> Just wait till tonight. Yeah. Okay, so that's our summary. Uh, board retreat this evening at 6.30. A regular August meeting at 7 a.m. on Tuesday the 8th. And Sheila Nagel not available. And then regular meeting September 15th. That's a Friday at 7 a.m. All right. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Thank you for this lengthy meeting. Um, thank you. I'll thank Jordan. Now Jordan's gone, but yeah. on behalf of the board, thank you to Greg and to Jordan for their diligent work this summer as we gear up to the fall. Um, thanks to Larry for being here. Um, with that, I'll declare the meeting adjourned at 9 55 a.m. Well, we're actually in Larry's office. That's <laughs> 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 he told me it was okay to use. <laughs>